This is Capsule on Live and Limbo. I am Sean, publisher and chief editor of Live and Limbo. Andreas is off today, but we have special guests. Please introduce yourselves and say hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Jordan from the Box Tiger. And I'm Lauren. I'm Sonia from the Box Tiger. What are each of your roles in the band specifically? Who wants to go first? Jordan will go first. I'm Jordan. I play guitar in the Box Tiger. I'm Lauren. I play the drums. I'm Sonia. I play guitar and I sing. And you sing. And you have one more member, right? Yes. Yeah. She is currently AFK. Yeah, cur- okay, that's fine. Uh, so um, this week has been a busy week for Live and Limbo. We just uh, launched a brand new layout for the website and... Uh, this is our third episode of Capsule. Uh, since last week, we have uh, a global reach. We actually uh, have listeners in uh, the United States, Canada, yes. of course, Australia, yeah. the yes. UK, Singapore, Zimbabwe, Japan, and the Philippines. I did not see that coming. Well, yeah. Really cool. <laughs> We're, who's the one guy listening in Zimbabwe? I don't know. That's, I have no <laughs> idea how they even found that. They must have been on like uh, iTunes, and they're like searching some obscure Capsule thing. and and they stump. made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, they made a mistake, a grave mistake. But Well, welcome to him or her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about you guys, the Box Tiger, a little bit. So where does your band name come from? Um, so pretty much like it doesn't really have any type of meaning and people ask us this all the time and I'm always like, uh, no, um, it's essentially Jordan and I one time were like talking on like a chat or something. And, like, we were just joking around because I had made, like, a, I had, like, been writing songs. And I'm like, oh, I need a band name. So, like, we were just, like, joking around and throwing out a bunch of, like, kind of, like, silly ideas. But the Box Tiger was one of them. And I was like, oh, that's kind of clever. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll go with that. And just started calling, like, what I was doing at the time the Box Tiger. And then now it's obviously become the band that it is. So, yeah. But you must like tigers, right? (laughs) Uh, Not, not even, not really even. They're they're not even your favorite feline no, they're not. I mean, like, I think, like, I like, I don't even like felines. I think, like, if I had to choose, like, an animal that's, like, a generic kind of, like, you know, it's, like, on things. Like, I like wolves and then, like, as of recently and, like, maybe, like, birds, like, owls and, like, fat birds. That's a yeah. big, big revelation. Yeah. Like, I don't box know. wolf. That might have sounded okay <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... When did you guys start this band? It wasn't just um, so. Who did like who started this band? Like, it was it you, Sonia, and Jordan, or um, it was like pretty much like I I was just writing songs, so it was pretty much me at okay. first. Like, I didn't even know like if I wanted to make it a band or if it was gonna be like a solo thing at first, like the first few like months or whatever. But um, essentially, like Jordan was like I was I was speaking to him when like it all started happening. Like I guess like he was the one to kind of push it along and be like, oh, you should like get a band around what you're doing. And so then I did, and it was just people that like I knew who were like closest to me, like friends and stuff. So there was that for a little while. But everybody had like different interests. And eventually, like that band lineup fizzled out a little, and and over time, kind of it's become the lineup that it is now. We've had kind of a revolving. Um, group of members but um, yeah now it's kind of become you know where it's at and it's good so and when did you guys uh, when did you start this um, project I was like very late 2009 I would say like it didn't actually start being a band until like the first month of like 2010 so that that time it was an evolution I guess right yeah Yeah, (laughs) I guess Um, so what is the process of creating your songs like do you start with the lyrics or the instruments um, essentially, like, I think, like, how it's worked, um, traditionally for this band, like, since the beginning was, I'll just kind of, um, come up with, like, a core structure idea, like, on my own, like, for as far as, like, you know, melodies and lyrics and that, and it's just usually me with, like, a basic set of instruments, like, mostly just me and an acoustic guitar a lot of the times, and then it'll, like, kind of go through the step process where, like, a lot of times, like, I'd go to Jordan first, him and I would like kind of talk about it and, and, you know, go over it a bit. And then from there, take it to the band and like everybody would work on it for like, um, you know, to arrange it and, you know, work it into like songs that we actually play live. Um, I mean, that's how most of like, at least the, the last album, like Sapphire was written. And also just like the first two new songs, like we were playing in our set live now. Um, But, you know, like obviously like, 
that's always subject to change. And I think like we just like recently last week we're working on a song that um, Jordan started writing originally. So that that's cool too. So, you know, just kind of, that's how I, how it usually works, but like, that doesn't mean it's like, you know, what we stick to as like a mandate or something, but. All right. That's pretty neat. Um, so you were mentioning your live shows. So I know that you're opening for Kevin Devine tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes. How did, how did that turn come out? Like how um, did that come about? Not not too sure. I mean, like, I saw he was playing solo, and, like, um, my friends in a band called Now Now, like, my friend Jess, and they're really cool, and so we just did, a, like, a small little tour with her and her solo stuff, but Now Now did, like, a fairly large tour with Kevin Devine, and I guess that kind of, like, made me think of his name again, so that when I saw him um, coming in through Toronto, I kind of just, you know, reached out, and, like, I think originally, like, the Brooker was like, no, like, you know, we don't, we don't but it's fine, he's just gonna do solo, but then, like, I think, like, there was more conversation like through him and like the booker and like we ended up being just put on the show and like, it, it's really cool and really nice. Like we actually got to, you know, sit down and have like coffee with him back when we were in New York uh, a few weeks ago. He's a super nice guy. So we're really excited to play that show. No, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah so nothing you can always ask and we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, in the future, who would you love to work with, like collaborate with, or maybe even tour with? Oh Correct. boy, we've got some great suggestions. <laughs> we were waiting for this question. All right, let's hear it. Lauren? I'm, uh, okay, so there's this band. Sonia knows all about this. Jordan knows yeah. all about this. <laughs> there's this band that I really like ever since, it, like I don't know, for the past six years. They're called Conditions. They're from Richmond, Virginia. And uh, ever since joining the Box Tiger, I've been like harassing them. I'm like, hey guys, like, <laughs> this really awesome band. Like, I think it'd be cool if we did a show. They're actually breaking up next year. Like, Their last oh, tour is going to oh, be crap. in May. I know, so I'm I'm really into like this is the last chance. It's like do or die. You gotta get them <laughs> exactly. Even if it's like one show, like I, I'm really trying to push getting. I don't know, just like opening for them. Um, that's about it. I'm not very ambitious. Well, and the yeah. thing is, like they're pretty big. No, they're not even that big. They're not big. They're like big-ish, big enough for someone in Toronto to like want to open for them really badly. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're not that famous really. So it's kind of yeah. weird that we haven't gotten a show with them. Despite all my like Facebook messages, but uh, yeah, but yeah, there's that, and then like I think for me, like we got to open for Metric back in November, which was kind of really awesome because I think like had you asked me um, that question like ages fourteen through to like twenty one, I probably would have been like, I really want to open for Metric, or I'd really want to play a show with Metric. Like that would have probably a hundred percent been my answer for the longest time of like something I really wanted to do as far as like I'm a fan of something. Um, so that was that. But I mean, like, I know there's like a number of things. Like, I think Jordan, yours is like Asian Kung Fu Generation. Uh, yeah, it's this band from Japan that I really like. That was going to be mine, but I guess you can say it. <laughs> no, I, like, that's why I said you say it. Like, I mean, because like you always bring it up, and like, I always thought that was kind of cool because like we just also recently like signed and like are working with a label out in Japan. So it would okay. be kind of cool to. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Bridge that connection through okay. Jordan's uh, favorite band. So all three of you just uh, named three. I would say three different styles of band that you would like to open for. When you, when you, either when a band approaches you or when you ask to open for someone, does there need to be some kind of um, a flow with the opening band and the headlining act? Definitely, I think that's like really important because I think, I mean, for us mostly, it's like you know we get excited if it's like a bigger show and we're being offered to play it. Like even if it's not like the greatest fit, we'll be like all right, well, like, let's just go do our best. There'll be a lot of people there. And like, you know, maybe some of those people in the crowd, even though like people like different kinds of music, they might like us, even though we're not too similar to the headliner. But I mean, like it definitely makes a huge difference when you're like tacked on the proper show. Like when we did the metric show or we opened also for the joy formidable back in June, both those shows felt really good. And like, Oh my God, this is like, this makes sense. And people really like it. And I think because we are similar to those bands where like, say we opened for, and you will know us by the Trail of Dead, obviously like a bigger band. Um, but, it, you know, there was a few people who were like, oh, this is really cool. But then, you know, there was the very apparent, like, we are nothing like this. Like, we're, <laughs> we're a lot quieter and they're, they're a lot louder and more aggressive. So, you know, it, it always feels better to be tacked on a show where it's like it does have a better flow. But I guess we're at this point, we're open to like any type of thing. Because also it's like hard to define what for yourself i think for me it's always been hard to kind of like gauge what type of band we are and like where we fit so like i guess when people ask us to do things it's like 
I'll be like, all right, well, maybe it makes sense to somebody. And like, sometimes it ends up being beneficial, even though it's not necessarily what I thought would have worked originally. Yeah, for sure. You should work on that uh, opening for that Japanese band. That would have been, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. my dream. Yeah, uh, it'll happen. So, did you see the Coachella Valley Music Festival lineup for 2014? Did I saw Haim was on it, which is a band I very, 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 very much so like now. I love them as well. <laughs> I'm like, it's like as of a recent more thing. Like I, I like recently like was like I really love this band. So we'll see how long they last. But right now they're like my favorite band. <laughs> they're like the female version of Hanson, right? They're all sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like, true? I, no, I don't think so. They do both start. With I mean, H. I guess if they're they're bands that are like siblings. <laughs> People have made that joke just because like their hair and because like... they have yeah the hair of Hanson when Hanson <laughs> was like thirteen year old boys. Yeah. <laughs> but oh. like no, they're cool. Yeah, no, they're they're awesome. Okay, so mm-hmm. when you look at like a a lineup like the Coachella Festival, do you ever see yourselves being on there? Yeah, I think, I mean, like, honestly, like, that's obviously, like, a huge dream. I mean, like, that'd be, like, a huge honor. Like, any festival that's, like, you know, majorly known and, like, people, you know, wait for it every year. Like, to be allowed to to be part of that as a musician is always something, I think, that you can, like, aspire to and, like, you know, would, I think, be humbling. I mean, like, at the same time, I've heard so many people be like, festivals suck who have gotten to do them sometimes. They're like, they're a mess and like, they're the worst. So, I mean, like for us, like having not been able to do that. And I think also just like knowing the gravity of like how great of an opportunity that would be, um, you know, I would definitely want to play oh, yeah, at a festival sure. like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. There's some years that have really good lineups and some that are mediocre. Like this year seems pretty awesome. They have Arcade Fire, Muse and the... Reunion of Outcasts, which is pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, out of all of those bands, so you mentioned Haim, I guess. So, would you ever like to co- collaborate with them? That um, with Haim? Sonia's yeah. dream. Yeah, that's that's I would <laughs> cry so hard. <laughs> we met them, like, I totally fangirled over them in Boston when we met them. Like, not really, but, like, I was oh, just, you like, met them? Very excited. That's pretty cool. No, she yeah, did. Jordan... Sure. Jordan and I got to meet them, and it was very exciting. Oh, so, so tell, tell me about that. How did that happen? Oh, God, that's embarrassing. I don't no, want to talk. No, embarrassing. Oh, that's cool. I'll tell it. <laughs> okay. So basically, right. <laughs> the security guard comes out because there must have been, like, some, like, 13 to 16-year-old girls that had been waiting since, like, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And they were like, all right, girls, you can come in because they'd been waiting there. And I saw them when they came in, and they were like, oh, hey, we'll have you guys come up later. We'd love to meet you. So then Sonia sees these girls get pulled up, like, outside of the venue after, darts for the door, and then somehow sneaks her way in, and then ultimately we get back up there. And everybody's really nice, but it was very foolish. Um, yeah, like, I guess I darted. I, like, I, no, I, you ran. You ran. You were off 20 from, like, from, like, You're like, far away and you ran for it. That's what I'm saying, and that's yeah. obviously the truth. So we're good. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. So, did Yellow. you say anything to them? Or did they say anything to you? Uh, we gave them a CD. <laughs> oh, you gave them a CD. Listening. I yeah. mean, they were, like, super nice, like, I feel like. And then it's funny because, like, afterwards, like, a couple of them came outside to just talk to people anyway. So, like, they were super social and, like, nice. But it was, like, you know not very like deep conversation where we would like have some weird connection. Like it was just like very nice and pleasant and cool. Were they shorter or taller than you imagined? <laughs> oh man, that, that's actually something I was like actually wondering before I was I like, they're reasonable <laughs> sized. Um, I think they're normal size. I mean like I'm pretty tall, but like they're not like so much shorter than me. They're probably just like, you know, like a hair or, like or so shorter than like I was. So it was normal to speak to them. Cause I, that is kind of like weird when like you do meet like, Especially, like, I think I used to get it a lot growing up where, like, you'd meet, like, an artist you really like. And, like, I was, like, young and I was, like, 15 or 16, especially a female artist. Like, I think when I met Feist for the first time, I was, like, 17. And I, like, I'd always looked up to her and, like, I'd always been, like, really excited to meet her. And then I met her and then she was, like, a lot shorter than me. And it was just, like, really weird because it's someone you're, like, oh, my God. Like, they're, like, this older, like, person, role model. And then, like, she was, like, tiny. And I was, like, oh, my God, you're so small. And I'm, like, this big, gigantic, scary monster. <laughs> around you so um yeah that's always like a weird thing i mean i don't know i think people always think i'm like a lot taller than what they'd imagine me to have been so i'm the opposite it's the magic of t- television right <laughs> yeah <laughs> makes things seem different than the magic of instagram yeah instagram as well 
are you guys so speaking of instagram are you guys um very social on like social media platforms and stuff i'm like pretty yeah. bad with it i think i'm the worst like i think i get like i'm not like an internet person who i'm like oh my god like i have a blog and like i have all this stuff and like i'm so well informed with the workings of the internet and social media but i definitely like use it a whole ton of like just to like do minor things and like i'm on it a lot because i work um when i'm not doing box tiger i'm working at like a parks and rec department where i literally just sit for hours in front of a computer with access to like social media that's like the last thing you want to do then after work (laughs) yeah it uh, you'd be surprised though because then i get home and then i'm just like oh what am i gonna do and i'll just go on my computer (laughs) social life i have a big one i have a lot going on for me socially only on yeah so that's another thing uh of being a a band in today's time right so Mm -hmm. before it was just recording your album going to the label and then distributing your cds and maybe have a few commercials here and there but today it seems like it's all about the social media if you're not active on it then you won't be heard is that how do you feel about that i mean it's like i feel like it's like um it's useful, but it's only useful if you do the other stuff as well. I think, like, so many bands get caught up in the fact of, like, likes and, like, you know, reach online. And I think that does help and it, it does, you know, foster a certain um, following and, you know, fan relationship, which is very important, I think, today for most people. Like, they want to feel connected to, like, their, you know, to a band they like as if they are connected to their friends. And so if they're socially interacting with their friends on social media, essentially you're creating that idea that that's what you are to them too in a band and like a lot of times I've made a lot of friends off social media through being in a band and stuff but I mean I think the traditional stuff of you know touring and playing shows and you know actually being physically a band and being out there and releasing music and recording and practicing and all that stuff um is still most important and I think you know it's having both both and having a strong presence on both that is gonna you know set you apart as a band today and most definitely um so uh last week um andreas and i discussed um the changing landscape of music consumption uh so i just wanted to get your opinion from a musician's perspective on like um uh, the release of physical vinyls or cds versus digital downloads or versus streaming on like RDO and platforms mm-hmm. like that. What are you seeing as a musician? Do all of it. I think it's important to do all of it. I think people, everybody has their own way. That's the thing about today is like, there's so many different ways and so many different outlets in which you can um, attain media and music and art, any art form. So it only makes and it's most sense and it's only, it's most beneficial. I think when you, you know, cater to everything. Unfortunately, we don't have vinyl, which is something that I, I would I would like to have, but we also don't have a label to give us money to do that. So we haven't well, gone that route yet. Hopefully but uh, that's coming cool. soon, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people love it. So, so the, the issue was that um, Billboard last week, they said for the first time in, since the inception of the iTunes store that digital downloads for tracks were decreasing a little and then uh, streaming was increasing. From mm-hmm. your side i'm sure you have metrics and stuff like that but do you see um your listeners streaming more than downloading or do you uh see- yeah definitely no, yeah. i mean i more. think that's what people do because people would prefer not to pay for anything <laughs> i mean that was you know the huge thing like when napster came out you know that was people were like well if i can get it for free why do i want to pay for it it's not that we like we certainly definitely sell things um, but for that casual listener, they're like, well, I already paid like, you know, $10 a month for like, I'm from the U S so, like people are like on Spotify and they're like, well, I paid $10. I can listen to anything I want for free, you know? And it's not like, sometimes I've had people come up and be like, oh, Hey, like, you know, uh, I drove here. It took me like an hour to get here. Like we played in New York and I had someone that came and drove from like an hour away and like, I listened to the album on the way. And then bought like five copies of the CDs. Like, I really love it. I'm going to give it to my friends. And then I was like, okay, awesome. So you heard it on here and that makes you want to pay for it. Yeah, or and come like, to the show. Yeah, incur- you know, so there's definitely um, very good aspects to it. it. You know, there's rough aspects where it's like, you know, if a, a song is listened to a thousand times, you know, unless, you know, the amount that we get from that is, say, maybe $2 or $3. 
versus yeah. if you know four people just bought it instead of a thousand people listening to it, yeah. we would have made more money. But it's like now maybe there's a thousand people out there that are interested in hypothetically exactly. coming to see us or buying a CD that weren't going to take the plunge. It's yeah. like, I'm going to pay a dollar for this at first. I think it's incredibly useful because it's like record sales for a very long time had been uh, are not making bands money. They they make you money, but they're not where your main money comes from, especially if you've reached a certain level of success. That shows and that's mm-hmm. like, you know, the opportunities you get are like placements or different things like that. And the best way to get that is like Jordan was saying is like, if a thousand people are listening to your record versus like four people are buying it, a thousand people are, are going to probably is put you in a more likely situation where more people are going to be coming to your shows, more people are going to care about the band or hear about the band. So, you know, things like, you know, publicists or people like are probably going to hear about your band and then maybe want to like place you on, like you were saying like before, it was like, oh, maybe you had a couple commercials. But I think that's such a big part of um, how bands make their money now is like placement and like TV shows and stuff. And um, movies and, and, you know, commercials and that, you can make a, a ton off that versus record sales, which you're not going to make money off of anyway. So, yeah. Oh, great Fine. insights. I love that. This is what, mm-hmm. that's what we're here for. Uh, so let's talk about your album, Set Fire. You released that in August of uh, 2013, right? Um, so last week on the show, we briefly, Andreas and I briefly went through the album. Overall, we loved it. Thought it was really Thanks. good. We said you had um, similarity, similarities to the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Do you think that's one of your influences? Um, I keep hearing that, like that similarity of like the Carano, um, you know. Oh, so you, uh, weren't, you, weren't, you didn't have them in mind or that's n- just not, happened? Not necessarily. Not like when I was making these records or these songs. Like, I like the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs like at a very earlier date than like when I started actually writing. Like, so I think somewhere you know, that maybe, you know, fell through kind of in, you know, what inspires you or what, you know. No, I guess like, if, it just, came, if it. it just came naturally to you, then that's, yeah. that's all good, right? Yeah, but it's like definitely it's a cool connection. It's a cool, like a lot of people definitely like the AAS and think they're a great band. So, you know, I'm always, it's positive. I take it as a very positive thing. And how were the other reviews? Do you read reviews of your album? Yeah, we definitely read the reviews. Um, I mean, everything that I've seen has been pretty positive, which is like, I mean, probably because like there's not a huge amount of people reviewing it. <laughs> um, but the the few things we have gotten, you know, not to sound like everything we have is positive, but like, you know, the things that we have, which is very small, um, has been positive. I mean, I'm pretty sure if there was more eyes on the album, there'd probably be some negative reviews, right? But um, the things that we we have seen are always very like nice to read and, and very encouraging and um you know and it it makes us realize like different things about the record that otherwise we wouldn't have known so it's cool so when when you when you read a review and then someone says you sound like the yeah yeah yeahs what what was the first thing that crossed your mind were you like oh really um no i mean it's just like it's just it makes sense like i mean i feel a lot of people will try to attack you and be like oh girl another band so there you go you know What's the most negative thing someone said about your album? Well, someone in a dispatch magazine from Portland gave us a thumbs down. So oh. that was that's not even a thing they've said. It was just like a thing they did. So like it was like they can give a thumbs up or down. Instead, we sounded it was like we sounded like general '90s alternative rock or something like that, which I thought was really weird because I don't think that's what we sound like. Nor do I. No, so it's like. Not- yeah, that's pretty weird. Yeah, I, I don't know why they would say that. I don't, I don't yeah, see I was that. Like, it doesn't make me necessarily upset. I was just like, that's kind of bizarre. I don't <laughs> think that's what we sound like. But yeah. you know, if you don't like it, then whatever. But to each their own. To each their own. Um, so, on your album, my favorite track was a uh, hospital choir. Um, yeah. I think that's like a perfect cigarette lighter ballad, you know, when in the stadium mm. everything's dark and everyone just has their lighter out. Now people have cell phones though. So. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. So that's new lighter. Uh, yeah. and, and it's not fire. It's not a fire hazard either. It's a little safer. <laughs> um, so at the end of the song, I really wanted to give you a hug because it sounded pretty sad. What? <laughs> what's the background behind that one? Well, that song actually, um, I think what, like, I kind of, you know, I wanted to write a song about like, it's really just it's it's to, it's my take on like I guess a love song, uh, which is weird because it doesn't really come off as that at all. But um, it's my grandparents. Um, like I was always fortunate enough to like be around really great and strong relationships, like as far as my parents go and like my my grandparents. But 
it was that Christmas. My grandfather actually, um, that's like when I wrote it, it was like shortly thereafter. He pulled out a small piece of paper from his wallet. And on that piece of paper, it had an address and a name. And it was my grandmother's. And my grandmother passed away like a few years before that. But um, he pretty much carried that for like 60 years. And before my grandmother passed away, she was very sick. She had a multiple system atrophy, which is a neurological disorder. It's a degenerate neurological disorder, essentially kind of like MS, but um, it's a lot more severe and it happens through a shorter period of time, like five years. Um, and so just like, you know, I, I, like I was thinking pretty heavily about like how, like, despite like all of like what she was going through and how hard it was for him to like, be around that he was the one who like took care of her and like fostered her and like, you know, really was like there for her the whole time. And, you know, then when she passed away, it's like, it wasn't even like he felt like, you know, it's like, even though it was like this huge, obviously like a kind of in a sense of burden from an outsider's perspective to have someone so sick, so close to you that you're like caring for, like he could have put her to like foster care, like, you know, uh, whatever, not us like older, like uh, an old age home or something like that. But he took care of her and he like, he was there for her every single day. And then when she passed away, I feel like he just had like almost like an apologetic sense of like the fact that it happened. He still felt sorry about it. And like, I think one of the, the most emotional and like beautiful things was like, after it happened, I went to the grocery store with him and um, he was already crying and he was just like, Oh, it's like spring. Like me and your grandmother would always go to like the stores and like pick out flowers at this time for our garden. And, you know, little things like that would kind of, like, get him. And so that was just, like, I guess that song comes from, you know, that relationship and, like, that idea of, like, just always being there for someone, like, no matter what. And that's what that is. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Um, yeah. So when you write your lyrics, you're trying to convey a specific emotion, right? Mm-hmm. So... I guess you you start off with a, like a like a few words and or like an idea in your head. How do you yeah. tr- then translate that and add instruments onto it to enhance the emotion of um, emotional effect? I think from like it's always like I never write lyrics and then like a ad- like everything. I think the melody, the lyric, and like the chord, the main chord progression. Those are the three things that like from the initial get-go, like, when I'm writing, will already be there. It's, like, I need that one chord progression that's going to, like, kind of fuel, like, the, the the song in general. There's that, the melody and the lyrics. Like, I try to really get all of that together. The lyrics actually come after a lot of times. They're, like, I'll refine that afterwards. But it's the feel of the chords and the melody. Um, I mean, with a song like Hospital Choir that was a lot more direct. I think I had a feeling and an idea and, like, And so it kind of all just came out like the lyrics from like probably the day I wrote it to like today um, didn't change like that. That's what it was. Um, So, yeah, that's like, I guess, like how it like it's it's kind of easier to like put the music behind it after because like I get generally excited. Like I'll hear like it'll be like three chords, like hospital requires like two chords and then it changes to four. It's like very basic. But in my mind, I kind of always am able to hear like where I want it to go. And I know that's something like Jordan helps a lot with too, like with this record, like he gets producer credits because like he definitely helped with like the production of the songs and like helping me take those three or four chords that I was noodling with and actually creating what was in my mind and also his mind and like what the song would actually then be. So yeah. You're a good man, Jordan. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> do what i can yeah you do what you can so uh people probably don't know this but i'm actually andreas and i are good friends with lauren hey lauren, yeah, <laughs> yeah, lauren. we go way back to high school so this is a question for you how you, I've, I've known you um you've been through a few bands how, how has how did you meet up with uh, the box tiger how did um, that come about actually this is like my favorite story because it's one of the few that i have regarding this band right. um but I first found out about them in 2000, I guess actually like shortly after Sonia started it. So like 2009, 2010, um, an old band that I was in was in like an online competition, like a voting type of thing. And uh, I was like, oh, like the top 10, like have the opportunity to be chosen to do whatever. And the band I was in at the time, like 
um, I was kind of like on the outs with them. Like I was ready to kind of leave because I wasn't really feeling it. So I was looking at some of the other bands in this competition, and then I found the Box Tiger. And I'm like, oh, these guys are actually pretty good. So it's funny because I voted for them, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, and then that was kind of like the first I ever heard of the music. And then um, as I like, I don't know, as the years kind of went on, I was playing in other bands, and I got involved in like playing North by Northeast and like CMW and stuff. And then I would see that the Box Tiger was playing, and I was like, oh, this is that band that I voted for. Maybe I'll go check them out. So I saw them live a few times, um, and I just got more and more into the music. I actually bought a T-shirt in like 2010. Um, and then fast forward to this year, like this past summer, um, I got a new job like in the same Parks and Rec department as Sonia. And like the first day of work, I got a list of like, hey, these are the names of the people that like are in your department. And I saw Sonia's name. I was like, oh, this name sounds familiar. Like, who is this? So naturally, I Googled it. And I was like, oh, it's a singer of like the Box Tiger. Um, and then I went to like, eventually I met Sonia, we got to talking and she's like, Oh, like it came to light that I played drums. And I guess, um, one thing led to another and I got to sit in on, on drums for like a past tour in October. And here I am as like full time now. That's amazing. That's yeah. Great. It's awesome. So it was kind of cool. Like, you know, the, the evolution of like, Hey, I'm a fan of this band. Oh, cool. Now I'm drumming for them. And like how, you always. And how's the chemistry between all four of you? Oh, awful. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I think I'd, I'd like to say it's good. Sonia can add input if she thinks otherwise. Or Jordan. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> no, that's yeah see, I'm cool. <laughs> Jordan is crashing at my place right now, so like that has to count for something in his books. I hope. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and so, but, yeah. <laughs> and Lauren so, inspired me to buy a chin up bar the other day uh, because I stayed at his house last week and he had a chin up bar, and I was like, wow, I could be a real man just like Lauren. And then I started doing one, and then I got to two, and I got one better each day. And so then the other day I bought my own. Yeah, I haven't used it yet. Might get there. But he's ripped right now. It's insane. You Wait, should see him. Are, are <laughs> you jacked now? No, not yet. Oh, I will be. Not as jacked, not as jacked as Sonya and I. But uh, uh, are you guys big way. health freaks and stuff like that? Nope. Fitness? No. <laughs> no, I work at a fitness center. So like, I well, not really. I work at like a community center that has like a pretty cool fitness center. So I will go there a few times a week just to like feel good about myself for like an hour at a time or yeah you need like 45 minutes okay, don't overdo yourself it's i don't quite nice. do the hour but I'm, I'm there for like maybe like three times a week and I, I do a yoga class which is like my recent thing i've been i've been doing for me it's all right yoga, <laughs> yoga hurts like yoga, and have you yoga done, does have you hurt. done hot yoga uh, no, I haven't done hot yoga. It sounds too scary. You know what? You know what it is, though, right? It's like you're just like in a really hot room doing yoga. Yeah, it's and your knees like sweat. Ew. So, yeah, I don't like sweat. I think sweat is scary. <laughs> but your knees, yeah, sweat weird. comes out of your knees. That's weird. Like, like your, your kneecaps or like yeah, your knee kneecaps. Pits. Your oh, kneecaps. Like behind your kneecap because that's happened to me before, but not like the the front of my knee. The front of your knee. The front of your knee sweats. Yeah, so your elbow sweat. Like that's what it you. does to you. How about your elbows? Your is that a possibility? It's nasty. That's pretty. Gross. I don't know why people do that. Yeah, it's not natural. I don't like that. <laughs> so, Jordan. So, yes. How did you get involved? Did you come to Sonia, or did she come to you? How did and yeah? How did that work out? Um, I found a video of Sonia's old old band. Uh, covering a song online. So you stalked her? No. <laughs> no, I saw uh, like a video of them doing a cover of a song, and they had a link to their like MySpace page. Okay. Oh, mine sp- like, MySpace. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Classics. like 2000, this, 2009. It may have even been the very end of 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to their MySpace page. They had original songs, and I was like, oh, this girl's <laughs> voice sounds really interesting. And so I was in a band at the time and I was, I was, I was trying to like scheme to find interesting ways to like advance, at least in my head. And I was like, whoa, if someone from a total other country that was also, I thought good, um, like sang on one of my songs, then it would seem like I have you know, awareness in two places. And then if she sang on my song, then she'd have awareness in two places too. And then I pitched that to Sonia and then she didn't respond for a long time. And then finally did and was like, meh. But then way later <laughs> we started talking more and then she was like, yeah, okay. And then, um, you know, she did a few songs 
and then like six months later, uh, we were my band was gonna open for this band, uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, uh, Land one of, of Talk. Um, also one of my favorite bands. I have yeah. the poster in my room right above my head as I'm sitting on this call. That's proof. Proof right from there. that show. Anyway, you should continue. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so that was basically my way to bribe Sonya to actually come over. No. Yeah, definitely. No. That's what happened. <laughs> Shut up. And Let's then get the story once straight that finally there. happened, she was like, okay, I'll come. And then came and then played and it was cool. And then, um, whatever. Things built from there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, so, so what's your side of the story, Sonia? No, because he just was like, you had to bribe me. Like, I wanted to come hang out and, like, work within the audience and do stuff. And then, like, it was just, like, hard. And, like, I couldn't find a friend. And then, essentially, my friend Jesse was like, I will come with you if you want to go to this foreign place with all these people you don't know. And then I was like, cool. And then, like, we were going to go anyway. And then he was like, and guess what? We're opening for Land Talk. And then I was like, that's amazing and the best. And I'm very excited. <laughs> so, so why did you initially initially um, not respond to him? I don't know. I just like, I guess like I'm really, I was just like, I don't know. Just I think it'd be a weird request. Yeah, it's kind of strange. It's kind of, like, I don't think it's that weird. <laughs> my space, like message of like, my mom just walked down here and like looked at me and was like, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm sorry. Anyway, but yeah, it was like a weird message of like, I so I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. I kind of like not like ignored it, but I guess like I just didn't like register. She like it. I just like I don't know. Jordan I must have like, sent like an essay or something. Some really really long. Oh no, no, it wasn't an essay. It was, was just it like that sounds like something I do. So it was pretty. That would have been like a really like on point pretty thing long. to say. <laughs> she said. Yeah. She says it's I, long. I wonder if I could find it. Usually, like my emails and stuff are very long and lengthy and very specific. You know, and you usually repeat the same point like three times, but in different sentences. Yeah, you totally. It was something like that. And you were just like, I don't know, like this might sound super weird, but I'm not like a creepy person. Nah, nah, nah. And it was like, if you have any recording gear or anything like that, like, I don't know. I read them fairly recently. Like I went on and I was like, I wonder what these were like. You gotta and save then I managed doc- to save those them. documents. One day when you yeah. win a Grammy, they'll be like worth something. <laughs> sell them on eBay. Yeah, sell them on eBay. Yeah. Jordan's first MySpace message to Sonya. <laughs> oh my God. But like Sonya was... Um, following proper protocol too long didn't read it you know that <laughs> yeah i was like i had to make make you wait it's like i'm not just gonna answer this this thing no i'm kidding. On edge that's classic sign yeah what i answer everything and i hate when people don't respond <laughs> so like i'm pretty good i like respond to things generally okay. it, the facebook message is not so much because i just feel like it's stupid but, like, if someone sends me, like, an email, I'll respond. I know, I Sean. I think we kept you waiting pretty long for these emails for this podcast. <laughs> no, no, you guys uh, you guys replied pretty quickly, and you were really responsive. So I was thankful for that. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good. Excellent. That's what we were going for. Um, so what the, f- the past shows that you've been doing, the last few, how have they been? You did Great. one in Barry, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, generally the shows have gotten better, like, since the fall, like, I think. Since Lauren hopped on board. Woo. Pretty much, though. <laughs> since, like, those, like that October tour was probably one of the better ones we had done. And then, like, since then, like, every small tour and every small thing we've got, like, obviously we got to over Metric, was amazing. And, but every show since then has been, like, pretty great. Like, and has been, like, at least, like, if it wasn't, like, the greatest show, like, all these people are here every show served like a pretty good purpose and felt like it was actually, you know, being done for like a right valid reason. And like we were gaining something out of it and making connections and friends and, and fans. And so that's, you know, that was important and it's fun. So we're very happy. We're excited for tonight as well. So now that's really good that you're, you have a lot of people coming out to your shows now. And so has the number, so the number of people coming to your shows are increasing. How about the energy that you feel from it? Do you feed off the audience? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, definitely when there's, like, more people at a show, you feel, like, a lot better. But the certain types of crowds are better. That's what kind of tying back to, like, you know, when you get to open for the right types of bands, like, the energy is better because, like, the crowd is there and, like, into it. So, um, yeah, like, I guess, like, the more people that are there, like, whenever we play a show in, like, Portland or Toronto, usually there's there's more people because those are kind of, like, our home stays and, um and those always feel like really cool. Um, you know, the bands you play with always make a difference too. So like it, 
yeah, the, the better the crowd, the better the energy, and the better the performance, usually. All right. So other so tonight you have a big show with Kevin Devine, as we mentioned before. You're looking mm-hmm. forward to that one? Definitely, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see him again. He was, again, like Sonia mentioned, that we met him in New York, and like he was honestly like the nicest guy in the world. Like, it was very nice. I, it, you said you had a coffee with him? It was hard to... Yeah, uh-huh. that what, was great. He was just so friendly. Like, what, even what though, like he, he could say nothing, and he was like, yeah. I don't remember. He was too nice. I oh, okay. like was concentrated more on his beautiful personality than his, what was in, in his drink. I need to know what people drink. I don't know. We'll ask I him think again he tonight. had an Americano, like black. Yeah, Americano. Okay, that's good. <laughs> what other that's shows? what I had, so that's why I thought I was, yeah, mm. too. So yeah. I remember like, everybody got the same thing. And uh, what other shows mind. do you have coming up? Um, we have a bunch of shows coming up in February, like uh, nothing in January and nothing in Toronto, unfortunately. Um until like, like probably later are you heading back yeah. to the u.s or yeah we have a stretch of shows in mid-february and then like a small stretch at the end early march um happening so that's kind of you know what we're doing all right that sounds pretty awesome so thanks for joining me today um where can our fine listeners find you guys on the interwebs um we have facebook so facebook the box tiger twitter the box tiger um, our site is uh, theboxtigermusic.com. We have Bandcamp, um, iTunes, RDO, Spotify, everything. Pretty much everything, right? <laughs> Pretty much Tumblr. We don't really update our Tumblr, though, so if you follow us there, probably won't be very great. Personally, I don't understand Tumblr. It's right? Crazy. I've never gotten on it. I don't, I've never I don't get it. In my life. Gone yeah. On. Like, I've been on it a couple times. Like, I tried to do one, but then I think I did it incorrectly because I feel like the whole purpose is just, like, reblog stupid things. Is that what it's about? Just reblogging? <laughs> That's what it seems like. People who actually, like, use Tumblr, for me, I just feel like, well, just, like, because my whole idea of, like, Tumblr was, like, well, maybe it's, like, you know, like a live journal more th- kind of thing, like, back when like where you'd write posts and post things and pictures and whatever about like your own self. But like, it always just seems like whenever I like find people's tumblers who like actively use them, it's just like, I'm reblogging all this like weird stuff or like this thing or like this interest of mine. And like, it's just like that, like memes and like, like memes or like uh, gifs of things. And like, I know that's, it's, a, it's a mess. Like, that's what I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't like it. It's too cluttered of like a social media. Like, yeah, I'm not a fan. Is there anything that you guys wanted to rant about before we end off the well, show? Rant? Yeah. Ranting. Rant. Do you any- have anything that really angers I you? I have in the- lots and yeah. lots of things. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> there has to be one thing that's frustrating you that you want to get off your chest. Oh, no. That's not probably a good place. Like, oh, not here? Public. Okay. <laughs> Later tonight, if, we, if you come to the show, yep. we can rant directly to you. <laughs> okay. And then you'll just like huh. prop it in. You're going like, to have like, a, a wire now. No, yeah. I won't do that. I have nothing. I'm very happy with uh, the music stuff we are doing, so it's good. I love it. All right, yeah. so that about wrap th- wraps things up this week. Um, I would like to thank all of our listeners for tuning in. Uh, so I'd lovely. also love to give a huge thank you to Sonia, Jordan, and Lauren of the Box Tiger for joining yeah. us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, you. You're our first musical guest. Hopefully yes. not the last. No, hopefully not. So in like... Uh, 100 episodes down, you'll look back to this one and <laughs> guess number one. Yes. So uh, check out their album, their latest album, Set Fire, on iTunes and pretty much everywhere else and on CD. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Sean Chin, my co-host Andreas at Andreas Babs. Uh, please follow the show at Live and Limbo and at Capsule Podcast. And as always, you can find the show notes for this episode on liveandlimbo.com slash capsule.